Did God make the church? This might come as a shock, but no. God didn't make the church. He makes new hearts and adopts individuals into the body of Christ. This is also called a con congregation or assembly. The church as we see it is created by men. It is not the same thing as the body. The church has had its ups and downs over the last 2,000 years. Depending on your measuring stick, some think the church in modern times is up, though they might admit it has a few problems here and there. Tim Hawkins, a comedian, likes to say that each church is like one of those clear boxes of strawberries from the grocery store, with the real nice ones on top and the moldy ones underneath. None are perfect because they're just made up of folks. As funny as that is, and true in a sense, others, including me, can clearly see that what we've got doesn't bear a lot of resemblance to the congregation in the book of Acts. I've had folks tell me that they and their churches are functioning well without parts of the Bible or law. This part Bible approach doesn't make us look like the first century church, but apparently that's okay and, well, the missing laws don't really matter. The tremendous evangelistic results in Africa and South America are held up as a sign that the church is not down for the count. We're all excited that Jakarta, Indonesia, at the moment, is experiencing a big jump in people professing Christianity. Billy Graham and successors have stadiums full of interested people and millions of Decisions for Christ recorded. Mega churches are popping up all over with thousands of congregants. The 1972 film A Thief in the Night and its sequels, along with books like The Late Great Planet Earth, made huge inroads into popular culture that are still being felt today. But really? Divorce and suicide rates that are the same as the world's? Denominations splitting over actions clearly forbidden to believers in the word? Drugs for anxiety handed out like communion bread? Is it just me, or does anyone else see that the system we've got isn't working as well as many think? Do you think it might be that we've rejected his law? It's funny, and I don't mean humorous, that whenever we start talking about the health of the church, people point to numbers. That's like telling a guy with a fatal disease he's going to be okay because he has all his fingers and toes. God cares nothing for numbers. He populated the world starting with two people. He made a nation of millions out of a family of 70. Check out Genesis 46, 27, Exodus 1, 5. He's got one son of man building a kingdom with numbers greater than the sands of the sea or stars in heaven even after he was murdered. God doesn't want or need numbers. He wants sons and daughters. It's disciples he's after who love and live like he does and abide in his word of life without question. I'm told any dysfunction I see, or that is measured by surveys and polls, in the church is a good thing due to welcoming all types with open arms. So, of course... This message is off base to the numbers people. They don't see anything wrong with the church. I don't agree. The mere fact that the whole of the word is not taught or practiced by the church in general is by itself a huge indicator of building on sand. Something is not right when discipleship is hit and miss and the fruit of the Spirit is in short supply. We have lots of decisions, but little commitment. There is loyalty of a sort, but mostly to personalities. My friend Mike calls them personality cults. If the dysfunction were just from welcoming any sinner, you'd think after a while the old hands would not be as dysfunctional. The fruit of the Spirit would be popping out all over. We'd easily be able to make a new Bible disciples, too, in contrast to disciples of personalities or disciples of a denomination. After all, the first century church also took in thousands of new converts all at once. The difference is that though they were devout men, as it says in Acts 2.5, they still felt the need to repent in Acts 2.38. Do we feel the same need? Modern dysfunction affects longtime attendees the same as new ones. It affects old line denominations just like newer ones. The longer people are in church, it seems the worse things get. 
based on observation, education, personal experience, other people's testimony, and professional surveys, we need a lot of improvement. We might be pragmatically growing numbers-wise in some ways, but in maturity and fruit of the Spirit, we are severely lacking. The modern church is flat, like soda pop without the bubbles. We need to repent and get back to the first century church whole Bible practice. How could anyone be happy with what we've got? The church in Acts was full of the fire of the Spirit, growing in love and power and community. The church of today is, um, not so much. Where are the prophets? Where is the genuine healing? Were these gifts just for the first century? Did God stop giving them or did we stop receiving them? In my opinion, the gifts are locked out because parts of the word are locked out. Part Bible belief and practice reign supreme. We still have a little fire and there are good things being accomplished. We do a good job attracting people with a rock concert or stadium revival, but not so good keeping them going in the faith. Ray Comfort, for instance, says he found an 80% to 90% failure rate for decisions in one study he made. He cited a major denomination which in the early 90s racked up 294,000 decisions, but later he could find only 14,000 in fellowship, which is a 95% failure rate. This is from his paper, Hell's Best Kept Secret, which you can find at www.livingwaters.com slash learn slash hell's best kept secret dot htm. Of course, failure depends on your perspective. I suppose you could look at the 14,000 as a success compared to zero. We're great at making decisions for Christ, not so great at making disciples. Real evangelism is life to life, meaning we live the word and it spills over to those we know. It's not supposed to be in an impersonal setting with people unknown to you using big screen TVs and professional musicians. musicians. The law helps us publicize the whole word. And as we live it, we show that we really mean it. People can't help but be attractive attracted to a person who is full of the love and peace of God and who has concrete answers to troubling questions. I find that using the law in a lawful fashion makes me less judgmental, more open and interested in others, and more able to converse with those outside my faith. More law equals more loving. That's the inverse of Matthew 24:12. This is how we effectively shared the Bible message way back before there were modern films, stadiums, jet airplanes, and superstar evangelists. The law is down to earth and for sharing the love of God minute by minute. The people who think everything's okay are either not paying attention or are like the proverbial frog in a pot of water being slowly brought up to boil. It won't jump out and will die if you do it slowly enough. I'm sure the people before the flood thought everything was fine. Israel ignored or outright killed prophets for suggesting that all was not right in Jerusalem. The skies over Sodom and Gomorrah gave no indication the day that it rained fire and brimstone, too. Some won't know they've got a sandy foundation until the storm hits. Things made by people tend to fall apart. Fresh injections of God's word, like at the Reformation or in Acts 2, restore some life. His spirit works to keep things going also, as far as reaching individuals. There are things the church is doing right, but some key things are very, very wrong. The modern church, especially in the U.S. and Europe, is by many biblical measures actually in a downward swing. Instead of being a bulwark of morality and defense of the faith, it's abandoning the principles of God's word left and right. Mostly left. We know God's message is still getting out. His word will not return void, it says in Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. He can preach it with barnyard animals if he has to, like the sermon from the donkey in Numbers 22. Come to think of it, he must still be using donkeys since I hear a lot of braying. But a lot of times the bright spots are in spite of the people who claim his name. All too often God has to work around us instead of through us. I just don't think hit and miss Christianity is God's intent. So that's my take on the church as a whole. Uh, more information is available on our website, www.wholebible.com. 
We also have a book we are working on called Whole Bible Christianity, a manuscript of which you can read on our website. Give us your constructive comments um, or by email if you want. Consider supporting us with a donation if you can. Shalom.